Welcome to our workshop. Normally I wouldn't recommend fixing chairs with epoxy glue, but sometimes it's the right tool for the job. I'll show you why. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. What I need to do is take that apart, repair it, and put it back together so I can get this chair in working order. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. I do a lot of chair repairs and I rarely see chairs designed like this. Most chairs have stretchers under here to help stabilize those legs and prevent them from loosening up. This chair doesn't have those, so these joints here need to be really strong. These chairs are unique because the apron is connected to the back leg at the side. These joints have become loose over time, so I need to take them apart and glue them back together to make them solid again. I start by turning the chair over. And here I can get out the corner blocks as the first step. These don't really add structure to the chair, they're just really here to hold on the upholstered seat cushion. Here you can see the brad nails are put into this tenon. The tenon is back in here and you can see this nail here blew out. So I've got to pull out each one of these nails before I can pull that joint apart. Here there's 11 brad nails on this joint. And the joint is still loose. You should never put metal in the joint of a chair because the constant load on it makes it move and the wood will get worn out by the metal. Pulling out brad nails can be really difficult. We put together a separate video to show you how to do that. Now with the brad nails taken out from the joint on the inside here, I can start to take this apart. And it's not coming apart all that easily. So what I normally do is take a wedge and put it in one side. Work the joint so I can use that as a lever to progressively pull this apart. There we go. There's the joint apart. On these front leg joints, it's fairly loose, but it's still got some hold. So the easiest way to deal with this is to put it in the vise and pull it apart that way. When I look at the old glue here, it's giving me a little bit of a hint. It's a thick substance and it's dried, crusted, and, and this is what happens with glue after it ages. But I'm suspecting that this joint won't be a really tight joint, it'll be a little bit loose. So I'm going to clean off the tenon, the shoulder, the mortise, and see how this joint goes back together again. To clean off this old glue, I use a sharp paint scraper. It's really important to get it back down to this bare wood because this is the surface I need to make sure I've got a good bond between the pieces. I've now got the tenon and mortars cleaned off and when I put them together, look how easily that comes together. It's very, very loose. So this is where we need to talk about glue. The right type of glue to deal with this joint is not wood glue. Because this mortars and tenon is loose, there's really only one glue that'll work with that and that's epoxy. Mixing that up, putting that in there, it fills the void, but not only fills the void, but when it does, it bonds and makes sure you've got a tight joint. If I use traditional wood glue, wood glue only operates where you've got clamped pressure against two pieces of clean wood. That won't work here. Another example is high glue. High glue is used in antiques. 
Uh, so this is something that I use for very old furniture. But again, it doesn't work well when you've got gaps. Another option is polyurethane glue. Uh, these glues can foam up, and you might think that that's great because it's filling the gap, but it actually doesn't offer any strength. So the only option here I've got is using epoxy to join these pieces and make sure I've got a really tight bond. To glue this up, I'm moving in small pieces, one section at a time. I'm assembling the front first, and then I'll do the back pieces before I end up putting it all together. I've got this loosely put together now, but I've got another challenge here. Clamping this way isn't an issue, but these joints here, I actually need to put the force this way on the joint. I can't put it this way or that way because it just won't close that up. So this is something called vector clamping. What I've done is I've created a clamping pad here. So what I can do is clamp it on here and this angle here and this angle are parallel that I can clamp this and get a really tight joint here. I've loaded up these back two joints here with epoxy and I put wood glue right here where I've got a broken tenon. It's broken inside here so that wood glue will give a good strong bond to that joint. I'm clamping the back two corners first then I'm going to do the front two corners after everything sets that way I make sure I've got everything exactly the way I want it. There, that's a nice solid joint there. The glue's set on these joints now, so what I'm going to do is take off the front here and glue that in. Okay, we're good to go. I hope this gives you a good idea of where you can use epoxy in furniture repairs. It's not for every piece that you're fixing, but in some cases, it's the only tool for the job. Some vector clamping details you've seen a little bit here, but I've got another video on that, so you can check that out. And if you'd like to leave a comment and share your thoughts on this, I'd love to see how you use epoxy in your furniture repairs. You can subscribe over here and click on the bell icon and you'll get notified every time we publish a video. Thanks for watching Fixing Furniture.